Hello, everyone. Welcome to Word Funk. I am Leon Thomas. I am joined by Austin Yorsky, Johnny Maloney. Uh, I'm sorry, Johnny. I'm sorry. I was late. I was everybody. I was I was 20 minutes late today. Although I I knew that I might be late, so I I tried to notify people in advance. So I wasn't being like completely callous. There were traffic problems, um, mm-hmm. because as you may remember from last week, I I had a physical. I went to the doctor, yeah. and we talked oh. health. Um, well, we didn't really so much talk health as not talk health, which I took as a good sign because normally doctors aren't like, geez, dude, do you work out? Ah, oh, nice. Ah, oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, it, 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 normally in my experience anyways, is that they, they tend to leave you alone if you're doing things right. So, okay. but here's the thing. I don't know. I don't know what the law in America or in other countries around the world are, but None. when you get like lab tests when when you go in to to get your blood drawn and then they have to poke it with a hot needle to make sure you're not John Carpenter's The Thing. Sure. Um, They can't tell you over the phone, right? So you you go in, you get a bunch of blood drawn, they stick it with a hot needle, they can't call you up and go, oh my god, you're John Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, But then, like, they can't also call you up and say, hey, don't sweat it, you're not John Carpenter's The Thing. Because if if right. if you get a call and they're like, uh, I, I you gotta come in and see us," and you'd be like, "Am I John Carpenter's the thing?" They'd be like, "Uh, uh, really? You should just come in and see us." That's like, "Oh my God, I'm John Carpenter's the thing." <laughs> um, I don't think it'd be a problem being John Carpenter's the thing. It's the thing remake you wouldn't want to be. I know, but like that is ostensibly still kind of John Carpenter's the thing, except it's like you know we borrowed this from John Car- Carpenter's the thing. Like it's uh-huh. it's still his thing. Well, his, would you want to be the, the original the thing f- that from Beyond the Stars that the thing is based on, or the book that that's based on? I no, I think I'm sticking with John Carpenter's The Thing because in this scenario, my blood is being poked with a hot, like mm-hmm. metal wire, which uh, which happened in John cool. Carpenter's The Thing. Yeah, I mean that's Plus the Keith ideal Davis thing. There. Who's who's keeping track of how many times I've said John Carpenter's The Thing so far in this episode? Because <laughs> I was before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I went in and had a bunch of blood taken out of me and sequestered away in a secret place on Friday. Uh, because it seemed like as good a time to do it as any. So then on Monday, I get a call from my doctor's office that's like, hey, we should probably talk about what's happened with your blood. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. You know, there's, there's nothing ominous about that, right? That's just... <laughs> really? Yeah, well, no, because it's just Canadian law, because they can't call me up and go and say, yeah, your blood's amazing! <laughs> it's so zesty. Because, can't because, get enough. <laughs> yeah, because if they call you up and say, uh, oh, Mr. Maloney, oh, we really need to talk about your blood, then I, like, you can infer, then, that there's something wrong with your blood. Right, so they they need to kind of like break all this news in person. Although it has been by people in the medical industry who have said, "Yeah, you know, if they don't call you, things are cool." But a lot of the time, doctors will call you and say, "Yeah, we need to talk about your results," and then they'll drag you into the office and then be like, "Everything's great. I love you, buddy. Have a <laughs> lollipop." So on Canadian mo- healthcare is really different. Yes, it is. Uh, Also, um, I had two doctor's appointments in the past two weeks, as well as a lab appointment, and I didn't pay a penny for them. Um, Just to highlight some other differences. (laughs) For example. For example. So, I got a call on Monday that said, you know, we have to come in and talk about what we did with your blood. And I was like, all right, fine. And I was okay, you know, I'm like... For the week. Monday, I'm like, yeah, whatever. They just want to talk to me. Tuesday, they're like, yeah, whatever. They just want to talk to me. Wednesday, the day of my appointment. Today, the day we record. I wake up in the morning. I'm like, yeah, I got to go to the doctor's today. Oh, my God. What if something's wrong? (laughs) So uh, all day long, I'm just like, I'm freaking out at work. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. There's um, John Carpenter's the thing. Except not John Carpenter's The Thing. I am maybe even the thing from the remake of John Carpenter's The Thing because it's not a prequel. I don't care what you say. They were trying to remake that movie. Uh-huh. All right. And, there, 
and I also I called it the thing from beyond the stars. It's a thing from another world is the original film, and this, the novella it's based on is uh, Who Goes There. Oh, in case in case anybody wants to <sighs> check out. Me. Check out. Austin, I, I I assure you that like people have already I commented know. on that before listening to the rest of the episode. I felt it like a cosmic force rippling through the universe as I went to like, Google it. Like as soon as you said it, I was like, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> um, I wasn't I wasn't one hundred percent about it though. Um, yeah. Anyway, we're uh, gonna set three records during this recording: shortest episode of Word Funk, most times. Yeah. Someone says the phrase John Carpenter's the thing, and also most correctable statements. I'm determined, so look right. forward to that. Okay. So, <laughs> um, the reason why I'm late isn't tremendously exciting. The reason why I'm late is just because of traffic. Um, because I, the, the neighborhood I live in now is anywhere between like a 40 to like 80 minute drive, depending on traffic from where I used to live only like four years ago. So all my old physician-y stuff, my, my dentistry, my, my doctor and everything are all now that far away from me. And, uh, traffic can be a, a pain in the ass, but I know you're all on the edge of your seats. We all want to know. Mm-hmm. How is Johnny's blood? Alien screeching noise inserted that, no, here. That, that's a dramatic <laughs> pause. Guys, yeah. my blood is amazing. <laughs> okay. I have better cholesterol than my fucking doctor, who is younger than I am. I've got great sodium levels. My organs are fantastic. <laughs> uh, so happy for you. I well, uh, apparently, and this is this is the only thing, like the only reason why he was like, yeah, I wanted to bring you in for this because my glucose levels are a little high. All right. Mm, yeah. Mm. So it's not the worst. It's because so you're they... so sweet. Oh. <laughs> 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 Um, but yeah, even so, more um, so after that sound. So, <laughs> so that's that's uh, that's Johnny's health front because I, we haven't had a good episode of of how how badly is Johnny dying uh, in in oh. quite a while. I don't think. Yeah. Apparently, not very well. Uh, not very well. Just the opposite, actually. Yeah. I am in great. You're really bad at it. Yeah, my sodium levels are fine. My blood pressure is good. Like uh, my my kidney is working. My both of them, I should say. My liver <laughs> is is like just hanging in there. He's like, "You go, buddy," and I'm like, "Yeah, liver." So uh, things are things are are tops, except for I just have my my glucose levels are a little high. So they want me to go back in and get some more blood, and you know, not like get some more blood but like get some yeah. more blood to be tested right and then uh, <laughs> you just gotta just, top up just yeah get just some more a blood. little throw a little more in there you know uh-huh just so that the uh just so that the the dollar value evens out you know we were speculating on your situation as we were waiting for you and we came to the conclusion that it was butt related but we had widely divergent interpretations of what that meant I have, um, yeah. I have, gentlemen, I uh-huh. like, I have never let anything but related come <laughs> between us. I feel that all things but related have actually brought us closer together. But give me your wild fan theories. Um, fan, I said, wild fans of my butt theories. Yeah. All right. There's a lot of wordplay uh, in there. Um, basically, uh, Austin thought that it was like there was too much of it. Like you had like an exorbitant amount of butt. My, my butt had approached the singularity? Yeah, it was. <laughs> it, it is sort of like grown too, too, like too fantastic for this universe. and Too powerful, like, too fierce, too strong, too brave. I, I just right. suddenly defied all laws of physics and the universe just popped in. It was like, can't have that. It was so I was an thinking... Issue. I was just thinking that there was it was more like what's inside, you know. It's, it's what's inside that counts, mm-hmm. you know, as every PSA will tell you. Um, but apparently it was... But, uh, however, it was... Uh, <laughs> It was uh, it was none of it was none of those butt things mm-hmm. uh, as, it, as it turns out unless you have like butt sugar. It, it, um, well, Leon, I was out. I was going to say that you know the good news is is what's inside of my butt, which is presumably yeah. blood, is in really really good shape. 
Okay. I mean, the phrasing Leon used made it sound like he thought they were removing a butt from your butt, like some kind of butt xenomorph mouth. <laughs> like I had, had an ex- like I had an extra butt. I had a superflu- yeah. superfluous butt. Yeah, I said re- oh. butt removal, and he thought it was like there was an extra one, basically. In right. there. Oh, okay. All right. So not like not my chief butt, not my primary like maybe, butt. Like maybe when you were in the womb, you absorbed another butt, <laughs> and only now is it presenting itself, right. as butts sometimes do in the wild. So Stephen King's the dark butt. The dark butt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we went to the same place, Austin. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, did you guys see the trailer for Dark Tower? I, I saw I some thought. footage, but did they release the actual trailer? Uh, so I didn't like see it on YouTube. I saw it in an embedded advertisement on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Oh, wonderful. So, first of all, good job, Twitter. You got me. <laughs> Your algorithms do, in fact, appeal to me. I'm sorry that I'm that predictable. But from what I saw, it looked like a, a properly edited trailer, like a two-minute thing. Of a lot of it focused on the boy in like our world before he goes over to the Dark Tower universe, and then it's like oh, Idris Elba is very good at guns, and then Matthew McConaughey shows up for like a second. Mm-hmm. So that's the the cut I saw. It seemed like I had a lot of our world stuff in it, which was surprising because it's kind of the original book, just the gunslinger, is kind of light on that stuff. Yeah, it's like mostly about Roland, and then he meets the boy, and then spoilers <laughs> goes on without him. All right, uh, and then later there's a lot of like. They go back. They go to our world. They go to New York. They go to Maine. Um, Everyone it, does. <laughs> eventually, yeah, in Stephen King books. I, I've even been to Maine, actually. Oh, God. How was it? <laughs> that bad, huh? That, that sums, sums it up, pretty much, actually. Okay. Nice. Mm. Um, so I don't have, like, strong opinions on the footage, and I'm the only one who, I think, saw it. So I don't know. There's not much to I... talk about. I mm-hmm. saw because uh, because uh, yesterday I think it was um, Idris Elba and the Macan were <laughs> uh, sparred with a little bit of footage. They were like fifteen seconds each. They mm-hmm. were like, Ooh, and I saw those, but I didn't see an actual trailer. No, I think you mean their media managers did because yes. I can't imagine Idris Elba types his own tweets. He must have like an entire fleet of like handsome people who do that stuff for him, right? Let me let me dream. <laughs> okay anyway the only thought i had that i think's worth sharing is that it looked very clean in hollywood in a way that i'm not sure i was prepared for i thought it was to be a kind of a lower budget thing because this isn't exactly like a premiere franchise that i think is going to take the world by storm it's not like the next harry potter and they put like a surprising amount of money into it mm-hmm. um and i'm not sure if that's going to be to its benefit i was kind of looking forward to like i don't know like the mad max fury road thing of like it's Hollywood, but you can tell they didn't put the full like Fast and Furious budget in there, and then it, they have to really use all of their... It's Hollywood, but they didn't pay that much attention to it while it was being made. It, yeah, exactly. It flew under the producer's radar mm-hmm. until it was too late to, to make it bad. Um, we'll see. I'm going to probably say it no matter what, because all the actors in it and the, the source material are interesting to me, but... Um, it wouldn't surprise me if it's kind of like bland and toothless in the end. But then again, Stephen. I think I heard Stephen King likes it, although he didn't like Kubrick's The Shining, and he yeah. did direct Maximum Overdrive. So I'll hear nothing bad about Maximum Overdrive. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I mean, I like the soundtrack. <laughs> okay. Um, well, here I think if Stephen King says he likes it. It, that just might mean that it is faithful to the source material because that was apparently his biggest issue with The Shining, even mm-hmm. though it is like a very, very like an obviously very good movie. Um, <laughs> but... Yeah. <laughs> Although there's like implications that I've seen that this Dark Tower doesn't pl- take place during the same like cycle as the original, which oh. would be a, I guess, a spoiler if you had any idea what that meant, but is. Ob- I don't. Oblique as fuck to everyone else. Um, speaking, I don't know why the word oblique triggered this into me. I was thinking earlier that your um, upcoming like full feature length video, Leon, the opaqueness of God. Uh, yeah. Why opaqueness and not opacity? I saw because that and I was I, like, hmm. honestly, <laughs> honestly, there, 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 there is two ways to say it. Uh huh. Um, I was I just lo- curious. I, looked it, I know. I, I, I looked it up and I, I basically came, came, it came down to this. Um, if if I had never heard the word opacity before and someone used it, I wouldn't immediately 
connect it with the word opaque. Uh huh. But I would immediately connect to the word opaqueness. Yeah. With opaque, and I feel like that would probably be the best way to use a not obscure word, but a not super common word in a way that people will be able to understand. Branding. Yeah. So yeah. That's... Basically, it's, it's it's basically just marketing. If I if I called something the opacity of God, people would be like. That sounds a little much, Leon. That, that title that title is a lot. But if I used it in such a way that people would instantly recognize what I'm talking about, they'd be like, oh, neat. I guess I'll watch this thing. What would you have called Requiem for a Dream if you were marketing it? I feel like that, that could have used Requiem, it. Requiem, Requiem works. Yeah. I, 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 it's only, it's only, uh, yeah, it's fine. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go much further than that if it would be called like, um, God, I, uh, now I'm on the spot trying to think yeah. of a, like a more elaborate word for requiem. Uh, <laughs> Sad song I'm not, I'm... for a dream. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, I like no, this I, game I... where we try to dumb down movie titles. Hold on, let me Google some <laughs> really pretentious movie, <laughs> movie titles so we can do this. Um, okay. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Mm, oh, that's a good okay. one. Um, Dark Day. <laughs> Forget about it. Forget me not. <laughs> that's also good. Oh shit! Hold on, guys. This is gonna be a whole thing now. I I promise you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my I'm... only my only concern with that title is that someone in the comments was like, "That's not even a word." I'm like, "Yes, it literally is." You're just British. So <laughs> I found an IMD yeah. page for most pretentious movie titles. Uh, oh, good. Uh, the Darjeeling Limited. Let's let's uh, get the SEO on that r- movie right. How do you how do you pitch that one to uh, summer blockbuster fans? Uh, Family Train. <laughs> <laughs> um, tea, ta- tea time for an almost white cast. Oh dang! Yeah, my favorite part of the Darjeeling Limited. Sorry to not <laughs> obey the rules of this game for a moment, but is the part where they when they get over their emotional baggage, they throw their actual baggage away, and it's like I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest. It's like the only one I haven't actually seen. I oh. just assume that all Wes Anderson's movies are like that because they are. Oh, um, wait, hold on, hold on. Do you not like Wes Anderson? Have we not talked about? No, this? I actually super do. Oh, okay. Um, he, yeah, but in a lot of ways, he's like my problematic face. He's he's pretty um, typical, isn't he? I mean, like, to himself. Oh, yeah. yeah. He has an aesthetic, definitely. Wes Anderson is probably the most Wes Anderson guy on the planet. Without a doubt. I, I don't think yeah. there's anybody else I can think of off the top of my head that is more Wes Anderson. More undiluted Wes Anderson than Wes Anderson. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, did you have a Darjeeling Limited punch-up for us? Uh, running a train on India. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a, that's a lot. All right, I'm kind of mad. I didn't uh, think of that. Um, yeah. Inception. Hmm. That's it's fine. It's like it doesn't mean like, what anyone thinks it means. Who cares? It's like dream it, thieves. It's like... <laughs> Except no, it, they're, but they're not stealing dreams in Inception. Oh, the conceit is uh-huh. that they are that they're 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 um they're fabricating dreams. Yeah. So it would be like I would call it. I'd call it. Dream makers, or something like that. Ooh, the Dreamweavers. Yeah. I mean, they did name one of the characters Ariadne, which I still haven't got over. I, yeah. I will never forgive anyone yeah. involved with that. Um, or yeah. sleep forging. <laughs> <laughs> sleep but team then, six. But then I would have to. But then I would have to completely rewrite all of the music in Inception as like hardcore metal. God, oh, okay. that'd be pretty good. Um, Tree of Life. That is that is not how is that a pretentious title? It's it, like it it's makes just... it seem like it's very like encompassing of the human condition when you could just it call it. Is. <laughs> when you could just call it like Brad Pitt has dad feelings. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I would call it. Um. Hmm. Um. You, you gotta. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Austin. You gotta shorten that. So just Dad Pitt. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that that would get the SEO juice flowing. You got to get those yeah. clicks. I think I would probably just call it two hours and nineteen minutes of Terrence Malick. <laughs> yeah, just uh, what's just, just very. Like, much, I mean, it is because it's because it's just like this is exactly what you're gonna get. <laughs> yeah, yep. an afternoon of Malick. Mm. Uh, <laughs> they have Antichrist on here, which honestly is pretty evocative. How is how is <laughs> <laughs> that was that. Never mind. Yeah, that's not tremendously obtuse. Yeah, yeah. 
It's not like it's, l- I mean, literal, but yeah, it's also just like it sounds like the name of like any horror movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the, also, there's just a lot of Wes Anderson on here. The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, which is I would agree, kind of a bad name for a film. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, I thought it was like a Jacques Cousteau documentary at first. <laughs> To be frank. Yeah. Um, hmm. Wet times at Ridgemont High. <laughs> it's pretty good. I think you mean fast times at Ridgemont High? No. When... No, no, he's, he's, he's doing... <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I see. I, I see what the joke is here. We can right. change yeah. fast times at Ridgemont High, <laughs> High to fast times with Steve Zissou. But we have, we have to make some other script changes as well. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to totally invert those two movies <laughs> into each right. other. Uh, I feel like there's there's some crossover there. I mean, Fast Times at Ridgemont High could just be... Wait, is that the one I'm thinking of? Uh, oh, you know what? I was going to do a joke, and now I'm not confident it's that uh, movie. Because I've, I've never seen Fast that's Times That's okay, Leon. High. We have to break the record for being yeah. corrected about inane things. So just let it rip. Oh, okay. Oh, I was going to say Wet Girl. Mm-hmm. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the one where the Wet Girl happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was right. Uh, that is what I know about the movie. Okay. <laughs> All right, night night crawler. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll, I mean that was also just confusing for audiences. I think because people thought it was an X Men movie. Yeah, yeah, but oh. come on, night crawler. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Fuck capitalism. Fuck capitalism. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I realize that it's probably not going to go on the marquee outside the theater, but I it would be honest. <laughs> Um, All right. Hmm. I I just call it Skinny Jake. <laughs> <laughs> you know. oh, yeah. Holy shit, he can act. Is also a good oh, name yeah. for it. Um. Hmm. I've never seen this one. Beasts of the Southern Wild. That oh, does sound pretentious. I saw beasts. I've seen Beasts of the Southern Wild. Mm-hmm. Um. Hmm. What I would. What we gotta I, tread really carefully on this. Yeah. One, this is this is this is danger ground. Is it? I don't know what it's about. Hold on. Let me read the. <laughs> synopsis it's about someone learning the ways of courage and love apparently okay i mean isn't that all movies <laughs> <laughs> that's the plot of blue velvet i mean except for of course fast times at Ridgemont high which is about a wet girl <laughs> that's what they teach you if you take literature classes there are only two kinds of stories there's ones about love and courage and there's ones about wet girls okay um jesus I don't know. Hold on. I was going to say this one is extremely loud and incredibly close, but I also know that's just a book as well. And that feels like it's outside of the scope of this. Hmm. Holy Motors? I'm just reading this list now, guys. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, holy, holy Motors. Um, I like that one. Weird French stuff. Yeah, I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't is, a big but... fan. Yeah. I, I had problems I love that with movie, Holy but... Motors. We've, ta- we've talked about it, though. We, yeah, we have. Okay. Um, so I'm at the end of the list, so <laughs> I guess that was a fun game we played. We, I yes, could... it was. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And just it like the good. foreign movie titles one, it will never return, despite my promises. Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> all right. Did you guys have things you wanted to talk about this week? Oh, actually a lot. Oh, shit. Um, none of them, I mean, some of them are like, I, I'm, I'm, uh, like hesitant to, because everything's bad. But there is one thing that I thought this this will take like one minute out of the episode. But I thought it was funny. Uh, there, uh, someone left a comment uh, on my uh, Kingsclave episode <laughs> that I'm absolutely that I'm absolutely not going to approve. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to like do this person the the service of instead reading it on Wordfunk uh, because um, I kind of love hate it. Um, the comment section for Renegade Cut's videos are hilarious because the Renegade Cut guy is kind of mean in a polite way. I kind of really like that. <laughs> um, I mean, accurate. Uh, yeah, I mean, fair, fair enough. Um, like, first of all, uh, fuck you, my good <laughs> sir. And uh, uh, on brand. And second of all, um, ha- have you have you like uh, never heard of Shade? Because I feel like that's you, you're just describing that that. Um, but yeah, that was fun. Um, is that really the most like a uh, non-approvable comment you got? Cause I figure that kind of thing would be a lightning rod. 
No, most like if like all the shit like that I absolutely super disagree with, like that can go in. Like I don't mind. Um, I might I might even approve that one even because now that I've said it, it's actually not that mean. It's it's he's like he's like giving me a backhanded compliment or something. Um, so I might actually just let that one through. I just haven't gotten through all the comments that I have to approve today. Um, some of them that are just like a, but I shouldn't say objectively wrong. Some of them that are just the worst. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just letting through because like, you have to pretty go pretty far for me to delete your comment. It has to be like vile or it has to have a lot of cuss words or you're, if you're, you're spamming someone or if you're a Nazi, um, which happens a lot. Um, but I let a lot of stuff through that is just ridiculous. Um, what is the worst one late? Uh, let me find it. Uh, yeah, here. Um, someone, uh, Someone tried to list 10 great video game movies, and they were all things like Die Hard and Alien. What? Um, and he was not joking. Um, what? Eventually, he became a problem, and I got rid of him, as I do. But I let those comments through, because at first he was just making a fool of himself. And he, you, can, you can do that, uh, so long as you're not a jerk. So... But yeah, his 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 reasoning was that the the characters like in Die Hard start weak but get stronger by the end. So that means he's just never heard of an arc, um, or hero's journey stuff, it, or literally any way that any story has ever gone. I'm ever. sorry. I just wanna I just wanna jump in here and say that yeah. John McClane does not get strong by the end of Die Hard. He gets like proper fucked up yeah he can he barely his, walk he gets his feet cut to ribbons he gets like you he, know i think the i think he means emotionally he gains a new perspective which again is literally just the arc he's supposed to go yeah through. but that's not like gaining xp and unlocking like your fucking <laughs> ultima skill like it's um yeah that's just a character arc oh my yeah God. um so like of every which, of Book which ever. most video games are really terrible at doing. <laughs> <laughs> also, Die Hard is based on a book. Uh, yeah, not. I guess that's true. They didn't retain the title. And was the other one Alien? Yeah, that's and and Aliens was also on there. I mean, of it works the also, other way. You could say Contra which, is an adaptation of Aliens, but of, not... <laughs> of which everybody else gets proper fucked up in as well. <laughs> Yeah, it was weird. It was a bad comment. I let it through for a while, and then uh, I some I, I I didn't like him later, so <laughs> I had to shut him the door. It's trolling, um, right? Like no one can actually believe that is in the spirit of the argument. <sighs> there, look, there was a lot of stuff like that in the uh, comment section for the King's Glaive episode. Because um, I, I mean, people... I do actually think there are video game movies. Not that any that I'm willing to like fight for on here, but. It's also not enough to fill out a 10-entry list. <laughs> That's just foolhardy. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, basically, that episode, uh, I did it. Um, and then I was like, that turned out better than I thought. But gosh, I'm just literally never going to do another video game movie. Uh, I did that because a friend of mine... Uh, under most circumstances, I would actually just turn that down. Because it's completely out of my um, bailiwick. You can also but, um, just say, it's not worth it. <laughs> I could, but the person who requested it is actually like a friend of mine, and she's also like been a good customer over the years. Um, so I'm like, yeah, all right. I mean, it's, yeah, but it's done. I mean, Leon, if I called you up and it was like, I need you to come to Vancouver and help me move a body, you know, um, there are limits. If you paid airfare, I would help. <laughs> Just yeah, putting that out I, there. I, I, you know, I'm helping someone move Saturday, so that's that's almost the same thing. Um, Almost the same. So, yeah, yeah, really. Less smelly. Um, Leon, have you seen Advent Children? Yeah. Okay. I was curious. Someone was trying to make someone. Uh, that was actually um, someone. What someone said in the comment section. Someone says uh, there actually is one video game masterpiece, and really only one, and it's Advent Children. Oh, it's a hot and mess. For, it's and mm. I and at first I was at first I was like. This is this guy joking, and he super was not. And look, you can you can like Advent Children, like again, like like it's fine. Like I don't care if you like a thing, mm -hmm. but no, it's not a masterpiece of anything. It's a pretty uh, stylish I mean, cutscene. 
Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Fine. I mean, and in some ways, so is Kingsglaive. It's stylish, but I didn't, I didn't feel engrossed by it, and not just because of the story, but also because, although pretty in some ways, um, it was also like all the characters felt really weightless. So it took a lot of out of the um, action scenes. To me. Yeah, I mean that's um, a problem with fifteen, the video game as well, because it was gutted during development. So there's like huge sections of plot motivation and character development missing that are actually in the anime. Oh. Yeah, oh. but. But the cooking, <laughs> yeah, the food is all lovingly rendered. Have you? Re- I assume you're referring to like those articles where they talked about how they went out camping and like the the 3D modelers and stuff would like take pictures of all the food because they had to get it so right. And so like uh, t- 18 months later, they're like, "Damn, these potatoes look perfect." Has anybody started writing this video game? <laughs> yeah, pr- pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> they focused in some weird places. Oh, yeah. I'm not I'm not sure that that's like I think I think they spent a bunch of focus in a bunch of different directions and then mm-hmm. what we just wound up with was kind of like well this is the specialized knowledge we have. Yeah. It, it it was okay, so I've been thinking about this kind of very thing recently playing Persona 5 and sometimes it's like the people are like okay, we have to deliver a video game. I'm not super interested in video games right now. I'm actually interested in blah, and I kind of want to make art about blah, but I'm tied to the video game format, so I'll just sew them together. Mm. Um, so, like, the idea behind Final Fantasy XV was, like, I want to make a, a thing about, like, brotherhood and, like, masculine bonding, and it's why there's no women playable characters. It's why the anime is called Brotherhood, stuff like that. And with Persona 5, it was, like, I want to make something about uh, bystander syndrome and, like, the how the internet is fickle. And it's, like, those those are all perfectly good themes for art to explore. But, like, both of those are also, like, 60-hour RPGs where you have to kill monsters and steal their skin to make boots and maybe those aren't the best platforms for those messages. <laughs> uh, not that I didn't like Persona 5. I just have a lot of problems with it, a lot of nitpicks. Um, one which you may have seen is that still no gay options for the main character. Uh, and yet you can they, they did write three where you can have uh, a implicitly sexual relationships with adult women as a high school student. Oh. Mm. And that just shows, like, where their focus is at, right? Because... That's, that's a little, like... That's... I, I, feel like, I feel like you could get away with that ten years ago, you know? As, as just being kind of like, eh, it's a little tasteless, but I get it. Now, I'm... No, I'm, I'm completely off that. Yeah. That, that's I... just, like, not... That's not fucking appropriate at all. It's it's skeevy and it, I mean it's an M-rated game. I'm not saying there's no place you can ex- explore taboo topics, but it was, in my estimation, a very deliberate statement about the things they cared about and the things they wanted to invest time exploring. And it's like uh, no. homosexuality, no, off the table, gross. In fact, as statutory they... rape is cool though. Yeah, not only cool, we have three different options for you, three different flavors to choose from, mm. uh, and that's just like, well, those are the choices you made. <laughs> I guess, and I'm not. A, I'm honestly not a fan. Although it didn't ruin the game for me, but yeah. it's it's things like that where I, where I'm honestly I, when I finished Persona three and four, I felt like deeply emotional, like nearly tearing up. When I finished five, I was like, "Whew! Now I can go read constitutional law in preparation for my exam." <laughs> it, it was like a, a weight was lifted off that now I didn't have to do it anymore. Mm. Which is interesting. I, yeah, I don't. I don't enjoy when I, I. I had the same feeling when I finished Dragon Age Inquisition, where I was like, "Oh, finally, I'm done." You know, and I don't like it when video games turn into that. Yeah, you don't want it to feel like work, and it doesn't have to be. You can make a long, involved, plot-heavy JRPG that feels like it's not wasting your time. Um, but there's also – it's just like competing drives, right? Because they're trying to make a game that you could spend all this time on and not immediately trade back to GameStop because that is a business um, motivation that game publishers have. Yeah. Um, you also may remember Atlas put on really restrictive streaming requirements for yes. Persona 5 because they very much want to protect the integrity of that as an experience that you need to pay for and invest time in to see all of it. <laughs> and it also made it kind of feel – like I was being held hostage 
to some of it. I mean, mm. God, it's, this is coming off so negative. I really like this game. It's uh, it's like objectively the best at like a bunch of different things it tries. But you uh, know what's weird, Austin, is that you can have conflicting yeah. emotions about a work of art that you <laughs> like very much. That's true. Um, the more I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think the music's dope. The art design's dope. I think it actually probably has the best story, quote unquote story. But I don't know if it's like that I'm getting older or if I'm, my view on art's changing. But I'm less interested in story this day, these days and more interested in characters. Like capital P plot is not mm. something that I'm like actively in search of the way I was when I was younger. I was like, oh, the story of this game is so good. And now it's like... You know, story is uh, is just events which give context to characters and themes. Right. Well, I, you know, I feel that any good plot uh, has like strong characters because when you write when you write strong characters engaging in an interesting or even like you know mildly interesting plot, we'll say that's always a better experience for me than uninteresting characters in like a super complex convoluted plot because it's always better when characters act upon things than when things just happen to them Mm -hmm. and this is especially true of video games because normally we are in control of at least one of the characters so being able to shape those stories through characters actions is something that video games are particularly strong in so it's it's definitely something I think that um, that that uh, speaks to the strengths of the medium. Mm-hmm. And real quick, like the, my two favorite characters in Persona Five, both have like weird problems with the way they're portrayed that kind of soured me on them. One is like this hacker chick who I think is written really charmingly, and the voice actress does like a really good job of making what could be an annoying like kid character um, be like likable. And then they do this thing. Which I'm surprised hasn't like blown up into a full blown controversy. Maybe it will when people get to that part of the game. It's a long game, uh, but she's coded autistic. Um, they never actually use the word hikamori in the localization, but that's like the Japanese cultural understanding of what this person is. Like they're a mm-hmm. shut in who like only experiences the world through the internet. Um, and then you like meet and befriend her, and with her permission, the her sub her like quest like like literally and explicitly is like change me. <laughs> Like, who I am. And it's like, oh. yikes. So, like, makeover extreme? It's it's like, oh, it's so fraught. It's a minefield of, like, very troubling ideas about uh, people on, like, the spectrum. And uh, maybe I'm not the person most uh, qualified to talk about this. But, like, she's a very, the very likable character, which clearly the writers also liked. Like they give her like some of the best like material to work with. Like the game's attitude is very positive. Mm-hmm. And yet it has this thing, which could very easily be interpreted as like, be yourself as long as you change to not inconvenience us. And that's, I, like I said, I'm surprised it hasn't like blown up bigger. Maybe it will eventually. But, and the other thing is there's a character I really like, who's actually really complex, but is clearly, uh, a combination of two characters they were two characters during development and over time they were combined into one and it's like the seams are super obvious and it's like that's uh, if you remember atlas was bought by sega because of like insider trading and stuff like a lot of stuff happened during the development of this game and it's for me at least it was uh like immersion breaking to see the strings there mm-hmm. and like maybe the average person playing wouldn't even notice and that'd be fine but that's another thing to me it was just like this is so good on paper, and then there's just a thousand little things that are like chewing away at my enjoyment. Um, and now I'm done talking about Persona. <laughs> that's oh, cool. Yeah, because it's a game that's almost all plot. Anything I say is basically a spoiler. So, <sighs> Oof, guys. Yep. The world. Sure. Right? Fuck it. I feel like we've been uh, slouching towards some kind of reckoning since like november right just personally emotionally psychologically spiritually and uh trying to do this show is like the 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 sad clown thing that we all do to like process it and is it working because i feel very much recently like it could be better (laughs) (laughs) maybe it's just Um, maybe it's just exam season i just want to i just try to take your temperature the show could be better or like just the general state of 
alive. Oh, oh, like is this? Does this bring you guys comfort and joy? The thing we are doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, it doesn't. I mean, a bit. I enjoy. I enjoy doing it. Uh, but like, does it stop? Anything that's happening? No, it's just um, yeah. it, it's a catharsis. Definitely, definitely doesn't stop anything. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, we could ask a senator, like, "Hey, does your day to day stop any of the horrible things from happening?" <laughs> and they'd probably be like, "Oh no, I have no effect on anything." Like, yeah. we're we're all but ants in front of this giant ball. I just think part like the show is ostensibly about us talking about our stuff, but in another way, it's really not about us at all, and we're just kind of like the mechanism through which these things are processed and like made relatable to people they're like oh i also have those feelings yeah (laughs) you know uh in times of of darkness uh i also i often turn to the words of jesus Uh who who once said i shouldn't have to pay for lepers health (laughs) care yeah man fuck i don't i'm so i just turned to to guacamole yeah Pretty good. It's good. That's that's where I go. That's where I find salvation. It's pretty smart. Uh, I mean, I don't even love guacamole, but it just sounds like a wonderful alternative. It it really is. I mean, you know, we should stop talking about guacamole. We're going to trigger something in like the three people in our audience who send me messages about avocados every day of my waking oh, life. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> Do you forget about that lurking I, I, behind the scenes? Yeah, I, I well look, I've, I've I can't even remember the last time I've had guacamole if I have ever. So like I forgot for a second. Oh wait, no, that's 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 that. Um, I, I just, it's like oh that green stuff, right? Um, <laughs> that good good green gold. Yep. Um, uh, yeah. So all right, so you said you had a bunch of stuff. You, maybe some of it's I, not I, appropriate. Is there anything else you guys brought? Uh, I have two things I want to say very very quickly. Um, number one, uh, I want to apologize for, uh, something last week on word funk. Um, uh, we're currently bombing nine countries. Uh, I forget which ones they are. Um, and I'm sorry off the top of my head. I'll, maybe I'll edit it in later, but we're bombing nine countries. Um, we're bombing a lot of countries and, um, I I think I said Libya last week, last week when I meant to say Syria, um, and I apologize if I, uh, got that wrong. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, it's not that I forgot which country was which. There's just a lot that we're bombing. And I think my brain just went the wrong way for a second. So sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to conflate the two conflicts. Um, I, uh, that was, that was an error on my part. Um, we probably shouldn't do that. Um, second thing, um, like I made one joke about being the Pope, like in an episode, like months ago. Um, as a gag, um, I'm fine if you like may also make like to my audience, if you also make little jokes about me being the Pope. Um, but if you say, call me the Pope in a renegade cut comment section, um, I absolutely am not going to approve your comment. Um, because most people who watch renegade cut do not listen to word funk and they will not get it and they will think. I'm some sort of crazy person (laughs) or, or like, or it's like one of those like wacky internet, you know, personalities who has like a gimmick. Um, it was a joke about how easy it is for anyone to call them to be an anti-pope. That was it. Um, I mean, you can still make jokes, but this cannot be part of the actual discourse. Uh, (laughs) if you want, if you want to, like, if you have like a really, uh, good comment, uh, about the next episode of Renegade Cut, uh, which will be the Elephant Man. Uh, no matter what it is, if you start it off with, so Pope Leon does, is gone. So um, keep that in mind. Uh, See, this is the difference between you and me, Leon, is I would lean into it. You know how some internet reviewers have like, oh, this is my fucking squad, and this is my, like, these are my boys or whatever. You could just be like, okay, parishioners. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's sort of that's that's definitely a thing I don't want for myself. Um, it's good marketing. Uh, no, no, because then I have to keep it up all the time, oh, and I I do not have the energy. And I I was a character before, and that destroyed my soul. Um, so <laughs> definitely, I'm definitely never. I'm definitely not going to do that again. Um, it is important to learn from experience. If it destroys yes. your soul, you only get the one. 
It's true. Um, now I'm just a husk. Uh, <laughs> so those are the two things I wanted to say very quickly uh, as like a, a message uh, to the audience. Um, beyond that, um, I did have one more thing I wanted to talk about, but I, I forgot to research it, and I'm sorry. I just didn't have, I thought about it today, and then I was really busy, and I just didn't get around to it. So maybe next week I will. Uh, but that's that's almost everything on my list. Uh, I had another bit I was going to do. Uh, that I did not flesh out at all. <laughs> we don't have time. We don't have time for it. I was thinking earlier today, like, what's it going to take for America to set, to realize we need to change our flag? You know, the way like South Africa had to do it after apartheid, or Germany had to do it after the end of World War II. Um, at what point do we say we need to rebrand all of this? Um, because it's it's now toxic the way that Comcast wants everyone to call their internet service Xfinity instead mm-hmm. um, because the word Comcast is toxic. Um, so uh, that's something to ponder, uh, but we don't have time for that. We should probably get into questions. Yeah, uh, we'll workshop that at an open mic night, and then we'll come back with a really tight five. I got, I got a yeah. couple of quick things that I can yeah. talk about right here, and yeah. I'm going to make them really, really quick, okay? So, number right. one, American Gods premiere, Kissy mm-hmm. Face. I've heard it's good. What what is is that on HBO? Uh, stars. No, Stars. Uh, or, if, if you prefer the canon pronunciation, Stars. Where does one even go to find that? Is that on the internet? What is the uh, Stars? I, I find it on the internet because the Stars don't broadcast in the Canada, so they became an Amazon Prime. I don't know uh, if that means that it's on Amazon Prime in America or if that's one of those weird Canada only gets it things because that would be weird. We don't get a lot of those except for like Chips Ahoy Easter eggs. Um, uh, excuse me? Yeah, Chips Ahoy Easter eggs. Okay. Yeah, Canada gets oh. Chips Ahoy Easter eggs. We also get Oreo Easter eggs um, mm. and other ones too. But I can't okay, yeah. I'm on Amazon, and apparently I can watch American Gods for nine dollars a month. Yeah, mm. that's Amazon Prime. <sighs> Life. So. Oh, everybody's testing me. Everyone's trying my patience these yeah. days. So that's what I have to say about American Gods premiere. Kissy face. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I started playing the new newer Doom. Mm-hmm. Doom. Oh. Yeah. Uh, pleasantly surprised emoji. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's pretty good. It's everybody, uh, everybody said it was really good. I'm really enjoying the gunplay. Um, although I like, I have problems with the um, uh, the secrets being wrapped up into your upgrade system. Because I'm like, I just want to run through the levels and shoot things, but then there's this like totally obsessive part of my brain that is like every two minutes I like hit the map button and I'm like, did I miss something? Okay, no. I think I'm okay. And it's really breaking up the pace of the game for me. So I'm, like, not a fan of that. But I'm not going to blame the developer for that. I realize that I am as much at fault for this as their decision to do it. But it's just... It's making it difficult for me to get through the game in a way that I would like to. So there's that. But... In terms of the actual way the game plays, the guns, the the gunplay, the movement, all that jazz, um, it's it's very jazzy, right, Good. Leon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have strong opinions about Doom uh, and <laughs> video games in general. Um, so. <laughs> also, because I know that you're, we talked about the opaqueness of God. I think uh-huh. I think you should um, you should watch the leftovers, man. Because I'm in the I'm in the middle of watching the th- third season of the leftovers, and it is surprisingly mm. good. Like such a good show. I might, I might. Um, Do they ever heat them up? The leftovers? Uh, no. Like Actually, you. wait. Yes, yes, <laughs> they do. Oh, oh! Spoiler. Um. <laughs> At Sorry. The, at the at the end of the first season. Delicious. That's an inside joke. Okay, I trust for you. For whom I don't know. <laughs> We're all inside now together. I saw a video earlier, and none. Of, this is going to mean nothing to anybody. But there was an interview Fine. between um, 
Lil Yachty and uh, the guy from Slaughterhouse, and they were talking about uh, Lil Yachty's new album. And he's uh, Yachty said, "Man, I'm just happy all the time." <laughs> and this guy, other guy, got up in his face and was like, "No, you're not." <laughs> And I've just been thinking about that all day. Like, what? What? Like, what was the context? Like, what happened immediately after that? Because that's the part I really want to know. I mean, it was an interview about uh, like music. They're both musicians. So he's talking about how, like, oh, my new album is about, like, love and just loving yourself and loving the world and just being, like, happy all the time. And the other guy was just, like, not fucking having it. He was just like, <laughs> you can't be happy all the time. The world is on fire. Like, be miserable. And I've been thinking about that all day. It's, like, stuck in my head. Um... I don't even know how I feel about either of the people's arguments. It's just like it encapsulated a lot <laughs> that's going on. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have the video here, but it's like a minute long. And I'm probably not going to stop and watch it. Um, yikes, guys. Yikes and stuff. Uh, questions? I didn't ask for questions because I didn't feel like it <laughs> today. <laughs> Look, it's finals week. There's a lot going on. It's it's Florida, and it's getting hot, and just personal and professional stuff. I'm falling apart. Uh, so I didn't end up asking for questions, but I pulled up some old ones. Oh, that's fine. Um, so I'm going to do that now. Yeah. Um, uh, Irving Royale asks, what's a hobby, not necessarily one you have, that you recommend people learn more about or investigate? Um, I feel about, like, Johnny's Kung Fu sometimes. Like, I don't do Kung Fu, but that I probably should. That, like, I would benefit from being interested in martial arts or something disciplined like that. Um, do you guys have anything like that? Any thoughts about, like, hobbies that you don't do? Or even ones you do do that you just think people would benefit from? Um, you know, I, like, I've, I've fallen off of it. Um, but when I was very young, I used to build models. Oh shit, me too. And like there I I kind of I kind of miss that, honestly. Like I I kind of miss building models because it was like it was it was neat because you are like ostensibly making something, you know, like without, you know, from scratch or anything like that if you're if you're gluing together a model kit or something like that. But it's it was really, really nice to just take the time to to focus on making something, you know? To, like, n- not be distracted by something like, you know, acting upon you, like television or video games or something like that, and, and like, turn music off and things like that, and, and just, like, focus on doing something instructive and, and, and and at least semi-creative, you know? Um, and I, like, I often, when I walk past hobby shops these days and like, you know, uh, um, comic stores and stuff like that, a lot of them still have like model kits and things like that. I often look inside and I go, man, you know, one of these days I should, I should go in and get like a model and just spend like a Saturday afternoon putting together a model. Because it's something I kind of miss. Just like a slow, pensive, solitary activity. It's not as, like, it's not as, you know, useful or like, you know, you talk about the discipline of martial arts and things like that, you know. Um, it's, It's obviously not as useful as something like that, but it's like, it's such a valuable skill to be able to like, to actually turn your brain off, you know? I mean, it can be meditative, and it can also be active. Like, I learned a lot about, like, just car engines from making model cars. Like, mm. I have never owned one, but I feel like I know more than maybe the average person just from actually putting them together in miniature. Yeah. So it can it can be an active learning thing. It could be a meditative thing. And it's also just nice. I, don't, I can't even remember the last time I ever just got to do something that wasn't productive, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. always just, like, making content or – you know, get reading for the test or something like that. Never just do things just for me. Yeah. And that's, you know, like that is, that is just, that's such an important, and it's a skill to have. I know a lot of people who can't, who cannot turn off, you know, 
like they rely they rely on substances they rely on and i've been guilty of this in the past when i get like after my dad died i i hit alcohol pretty hard like easily you know like it was very easy for me to bury a lot of my stressors in a substance but i know a lot of people who who do that who can't switch off without having a drink or you know like having a toke or a smoke or something like that you know like they they rely so much on external influence to be able to dictate what state they're in and it's some i'm trying to get back in touch with that right now actually i've spent like the last six weeks or so six or seven weeks trying to kind of re-access that part of me that's like you i can dictate the pace at which i currently live my life that when i come home from a hectic day i don't have to have a hectic evening and i can just turn it off and say you know what i'm done with that and i'm i want to move on to something else i'm trying to rewrite a couple of like like patterns and uh and and yeah like something like model building was was just like it was perfect for that you know yeah just doing something just for yourself mhm uh, Leon, any thoughts on hobbies? Uh, I'm trying to d- determine the difference between a hobby and an interest because mm-hmm. I I feel like I have a lot of interests, but I'm not sure. Like reading is a hobby. I mean, it, I, so I'm I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah. I, um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Just grammatically, I, I, I think it's hobbies are more active, but it's really yeah. Not I would I I would I would make the distinction that a hobby is probably more interactive than an okay. interest. So reading, right. I would say, probably like walks the razor's edge because yeah. it is it is active insofar as that you are engaging in something mentally yeah. that, you know, an interest in... Uh, uh, like, I listen to music a lot, but that doesn't mean that when I put music on, I'm always like mulling over lyrics and... But it can get to that point where I'm like, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to put my headphones on, and I'm really going to give this album a listen and try and absorb and things like that. Like, that's a very active approach to music. Okay, well, then I would, then in in my case, I would say that reading would be a hobby because in addition to reading it, I'm almost always taking notes. So uh, I'm going to have to say yes on that one. But if you want a funny answer, I would say people need to learn how to cook, and by people, I mean other people. (laughs) I'm going to have cereal for dinner. <laughs> nice. I'm, make, I'm making stroganoff tonight. Ah, oh, sounds like a lot of stuff. I don't know. I only kind of know what that is. <laughs> it's um, going to be good. Yeah. It's like noodles and meat know. and sauce, right? I know beef stroganoff. So, it's only kind of stroganoff I know. I'm using okay. ground turkey, though. Okay. So, oh. yeah, you're so healthy. You're so fancy. You're, I mean, besides your glucose, just like your... Your situation is enviable, Johnny. My HDL is so H, and my LDL is so L. Nice. Uh, when you said, are you talking about substances? It brought up a thing in my brain that I don't remember if I talked about on here. Did I tell you guys I went to an adult party? Like, a, or I guess not adult, like a college party, I guess? An, an adult. <laughs> <laughs> there were grown-ups there. Yeah. <laughs> Hide the comic books. Yeah, no, they were, like, drinking, and there was loud music and stuff, and I was there for, like, an hour and a half. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Did you go to, like, did you go to, like, a Frosh Week party or something like that? Did no. you have a co- – Austin, did you have a college experience? No, my roommates invited people over for a house party, but there was, like, 40 people here. They were, like, oh. my backyard and house was full of people, and they were you all drinking. That- that is that is not like speaking as someone who is middle aged. I'm just gonna tell you that is not actually a grown up party. No, it was college. I re- I tried to rescind <laughs> it. It was it was all red red cups and loud hip hop music. Yeah, I. Oh, okay. That's yeah. Okay. All right. So you had a you did you had a college experience. Good for you. I mean, I've been to them before. I'm just the most recent. <laughs> I'm 26. Okay. If anybody has forgotten, um, my roommates bought me uh non-alcoholic like sparkling grape juice mm-hmm. <laughs> nice and i lost at beer pong oh. and that's the whole story someone came up to me and they're like oh i heard you have a podcast and i was like Mm-mm, nope actually <laughs> 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 i was like you you must have misheard and then i ran away and then i went there was was, two, was, there... was said person attractive i don't i didn't even consider it oh, okay. uh there were two dogs there and i pet both oh. of them and they were very good mm. all right um, highly recommend that part of the experience. I stayed there for like an yeah. hour and a half. It went on, f- uh, felt like forever. 
I don't know. I feel like uh, six hours or something. It was like eight to like two in the morning, maybe. And I was there for a while, and then I went for a walk. And then when I came back, it was like winding down. Um, and that's the whole story. That's it. Cool. I'm lame, but I got grape juice right. and I pet two dogs. Grape juice is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Rick Armstrong asks, "What's your favorite condiment, and why is it mustard?" <laughs> it's a very simple, easy question. We can do this, guys. I believe in it, us. It, it, it is. So, now yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm done with that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't have, like... Um, You're done with condiments? Like, I, <laughs> no. No. I, I, I'm saying I feel like it's already been established that, like, me and, like, having anything, like, fancy food in, in my home is not a thing. But, like, what uh, kind so, of mustard? Um, I have one thing of mustard in my refrigerator right now. I'm not going into the other room to check what, what, what it's called. I'm pretty sure it's a store brand brown mustard that I sometimes use on things, okay. but not a lot. All right. Well, a brown brown mustard is a step up. You're doing okay there. Yeah. Austin? Is, wait, is brown mustard considered better than yellow just because it's not like the default? This feels like elitism, frankly. Oh, it is. There's... It absolutely is. <laughs> It's also there's also it just feels like there's more stuff inside. I'm not really sure how to explain that. It feels thicker. <laughs> just, it feels thicker and just and like less, um, it also tastes better. So that's like yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm I don't have like the most extensive palate. Like food is like the I, I don't I don't mean I don't dislike food. I want that to be clear. I like food a lot. I put a lot of it into my body, but it doesn't need to. It doesn't need to be like anything special. Like yeah. Is, is sour cream a condiment? Because I try to put that on as many things as possible. Yeah, yeah, I'd qualify oh. sour cream as a condiment. Because it's not really something you just eat out of the container with a spoon. And yeah. if you do, what is, like, <laughs> what is your deal? I, I tell, ate... me, tell me what your deal is. I'm not <laughs> addressing this to you specifically. Do you eat sour cream with a spoon? <laughs> no. I was going to say that I ate so much yogurt yesterday that I, like, burned my tongue on it somehow. Oh. It's just not a thing I realized it was possible. It, was, well, it, was it a fruity yogurt, up. or was it like plain yogurt? Uh, it was like Greek yogurt. Yeah, but okay. there's still plain Greek yogurt, and then yeah. like fruity Greek yogurt. No, I think it was like lightly flavored. Light, okay. Strawberry, maybe? Hmm. Um, I don't know. That I feel like I have a lot of stories where I started, and I'm like, here's a thing that happened to me. And I was like, oh, wait, that sucked in was boring. <laughs> but I couldn't, I couldn't help yeah. it, though. They just come out sometimes. What are you going to do? Uh, yeah, I, I, I tried making mustard sound interesting a minute ago, and it just fell apart. I'm sorry. It was, my, it's, it's mustard. My favorite condiment is a, a, a sort of a modified Russian dressing that I make at home, um, which is really just like – Russian dressing is really just like ketchup, mayonnaise, and relish, also known as Thousand Islands or Big Mac secret sauce. <laughs> so guess what? The secret's out! Um, <laughs> the sauce of many faces. <laughs> but I, I make, I make, a, as I said, like a heavily modified version at home that has a little bit of mustard in it. I use a spicy onion relish instead of pickle relish. Uh, it's called Hellish Relish. Uh, is the brand name. <laughs> nice. Uh, oh. It's it's local. They do it. They do it in British Columbia just for that extra level of pretension. Mm -hmm. I had to mention that. Uh, and I use a little bit of garlic chili sauce in it. Uh, as well as a dab of mustard. Uh, but, and again, just for that extra step beyond, I make the mustard myself. Out of powder, I should say. I don't like grind mustard, <laughs> but like... I I constantly vacillate between being incredibly jealous of you, Johnny, and being so thankful that I don't need the things you need to be I, happy because it sounds I exhausting waste, i waste a lot of time and then uh like i do you know i enjoy i enjoy my life i really do but that doesn't mean that i don't have moments where i just suddenly stop whatever it is i'm doing and say what the fuck is up with me yeah like what am i i am wasting like so much time with this <laughs> shit right now god <laughs> Yeah. So I I do have great moments of doubt. Don't you worry about it, Austin. <clears throat> All right. Uh, but it's it's really that's basically uh, those who follow my Twitter are aware of a particular chicken nugget situation that <laughs> I have wrapped myself up in uh, for the past couple of months. 
uh, that is that is basically my my go to chicken nugget dipping sauce right now. So I am slowly working through my way, uh, through my my way through. Pardon me. Yeah. Of the remaining, I think just about two pounds of of chicken nuggets. <laughs> How do you have so many nuggets, Johnny? I it, they were free. Oh, wow. I, I spent enough money at the grocery store, and I'm standing in line, and the very informative, helpful lady who was running the cash register said, you know, spending this much money, you qualify for the special offer that we have this week. I said, oh, really, what's the special offer? And she said, if you spend this much money, which you have, you earn a free five pound of chicken nuggets. <laughs> and I was like, what a deal! <laughs> Uh, I said at probably that level, very unusually loudly in the grocery store and promptly ran off and and grabbed five pounds of chicken nuggets that I was really excited for. And then I didn't realize until I got home that I had five pounds of chicken nuggets and was just kind of like, oh, I feel like you accidentally got like walked backwards into a curse, like a Romani curse somehow situation. (laughs) Like this is one of the, this is like one of those thinners, one of those Stephen King's thinners, where at first mm-hmm. you're like, oh, actually this seems beneficial. Oh no, I can't get out of this. And yeah. The, the it, question it's... is, what did you do? You spent X amount of money at the grocery store, but on the way there, did you perhaps hit someone with your car? No, no. But I mean, you know, it's it's possible that I was just not nice to somebody. I try to be nice, but I, you know, maybe I said something I shouldn't have on the podcast. And somebody <laughs> was like, "Say that about Zach fucking Snyder, Willie." <laughs> Sometimes I'm mean in a polite way. You, you will, you will nug more than you. <laughs> so, because that I don't know, that seems like a curse that a, a Snyderian would probably inflict upon me. Too many nugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh all right so i promised a short episode i think it's a good place to end before uh we've wasted the entire night doing this how do you guys feel about okay. that um, john carpenter's the thing mm-hmm. yeah. we should also just say some wrong very correctable stuff mm-hmm. if that all like possible. did you guys know for example that um the russian civil war was because of spaniards uh, did you know Final Fantasy was named that because Square Enix was going out of or SquareSoft was going out of business? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Buddhism and Hinduism are literally the same thing. All right, we've all learned something today. Mm-hmm.